Okay, I've been putting this off for way too long, but it's finally time. So, what's up guys, it's me, DinosG, and welcome to the final installation of the Jato fan game kit tutorial series thing. Uh, yeah, this is the final part. Um, after this, you're gonna be on your own on your uh, fan game making journey. Because um, I've basically have like covered all of the basic stuff that uh, helps you set your fan game off at this point. Like I set up all the scripts, all of the, uh, you know, everything. Uh, and this part will just go over everything that's left. So, um, without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, so we are back in studio, and as we can see, our fan game kit tutorials place is right here. So, as the default place is the ring select, and that's where we need to go. If we just click it, we'll be transported to the ring select. And there we go. Now we are where we left off before. Okay, so now that we're in the rank select, I'm going to show you how to make the difficulty bar actually function and how to get rid of the credits. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the credits because that's the easier one. So um, let's find the GUI real quick, then go in the frame bottom right, and there should be this teleport to ring text. Yeah, this is actually the credits text. You can just delete that. And then go into navigation. The script should be insert or player scripts. And you can see this TTR. Uh, yeah, you could just get rid of that. And there's another line right here, TTR. And get rid of that as well. Okay, so now we've gotten rid of the credits text. Now let's actually move on to the exciting thing. The difficulty bar. So the difficulty bar, like, you can see it, it exists. It's just not functional. It's just a red bar. It literally does nothing. It has no functionality put in. And that's exactly what we're going to put in. Some functionality. Okay, so we need to start off with a UI table layout, which you need to insert into the difficulty bar uh, frame. And then you're gonna tick on these, then fill direction, say the same, a horizontal alignment center, major axis, column major, sort order by name, and vertical alignment center as well. Uh, we're gonna need to do the sort order by name because because all of the difficulty slot column things are going to be named like one, two, three, four, five, so they actually go in order. So, uh, yeah. Alright, so now that we've set that up, uh, let's go into here. And so this is the uh, ring one thing. Like, this is, you know, like where all the info and stuff is. We I went over this uh, in the last episode, so if you don't know what you're doing here, refer to the last part. Anyways, okay, so you create a new folder in here. And call it tower list exactly like that and then you just want to create a frame inside of it and this is going to be our uh, little thingy so this is going to be our difficulty columns so uh, for this example i'll name it one and i'll uh, put it green as easy then i'll just put another one call it two and then i'll put it put it at medium so the difficulty bar is going to show one slot for an easy difficulty and another slot for a medium difficulty. They're going to be very wide because there's only two of them. <laughs> the, the, the more there are, the less wide they are. Okay, so now that we've set up like the actual thing and everything, uh, let's go uh, into what we actually need to change in the script. So we're going to need to head back to navigation and let's scroll down to the function set ring right here. I'm gonna have uh, two things to paste here. I'll have a paste bin link in the description where you can copy from and paste it. Okay, so below this line, current ring right here, you're gonna want to paste in this line right here. So this is gonna define this folder right here. And then we're just gonna uh, do that. And now on this line, paste in this right here. So this part basically just uh, is gonna display uh, these right here. It's gonna move these into the difficulty bar frame and they're gonna get displayed according to like what ring it is. Uh, for demonstration purposes, I'll duplicate this right here and then name it R2 for ring two. Then I'll change some of the info uh, just to just to show that it actually does change it. Info and found guy, found guy. There we go. And then access accessible, I'll take that off. Then badge count zero, place ID. I'll change that to zero as well. Uh, and then the tower list, I'm gonna make this first one medium. Then I'm gonna make the second one hard. And then I'm gonna add an extra one f uh, and name it three, and then I'll name it difficult. Or make it difficult. 
And also, in the difficulty bar, you can change the background color to black or whatever color uh, you prefer. That's... Uh, it. Like, this color is just gonna show up while it's loading, if you don't have the blind or loading thing uh, ticked on as visible. So, um... Now that we have all the script modifications in, let's playtest and see what happens. So as you can see, this is loading. This is how, uh, the blind and loading thing. Uh, it covers up the screen with the loading text in the middle. And as we can see right here, the difficulty bar actually functions. We see the, me uh, the easy and the medium. And then if we switch to the next ring, we have the different name, the different info, and also the different difficulty bar, which shows the three things that I added. And also is inaccessible as you can see here. And uh, yeah, uh, that's pretty much it for the difficulty bar. Alright, so uh, I forgot to go over this in the last episode, or I just didn't do it on purpose, but there's this folder called beams right here. This is for those, like, connecting, connect things. So, the way you make these is, uh, I'll show you real quick. So, you add a part. I'll, I'll like, show the beam and how, how they work. So, you grab a part. Then you grab another part. I'll just oh, move these out the way up there. There you go. Let's let's group that into. Uh, you can name this whatever. I'll just name it R1. For example, and then add an attachment here into this part, and then add an attachment into this part. And then you can add this in whichever part you want. But you search up a beam and add that. Now, attachment zero right here, click it, and it's gonna ask you to choose an attachment, so choose this one right here, and then chat and do the same for attachment one, but with the other one. Now there's a beam connecting right here. Uh, you can change the texture right here, and you can also like change the speed of it and stuff like that, and color and everything. I'll switch it to red as, as to show it's inaccessible. To make the beams actually work and like show if you can access a ring or not, uh, you can see in the place lists in world one you just do the badge count copy that value and paste it inside of the part that has the beam so control shift v right here and uh and then yeah that that should be uh that's how you set up the beams uh i'll move this in frame so you can actually see it appear uh, like to change colors i'm gonna anchor these parts there we go and uh, now if we play test uh, it should appear green since the badge count value was zero and there we go, you see the beam appears green because the badge count is zero, so it's it's just like, oh yeah, you have enough badges, so turn the beam green. So yeah, that's how to set up beams. Uh, you can find a better version of the beams in like a Kato ring select on copy locks place or something. You can just do whatever. Or you can just not have the beams, like it, it's up to you really. All right, so that's that covers the ring select. So uh, let's move on to the ring place because there's some stuff we need to fix there as well. Okay, now, if you've forgotten how to access the, like, actual ring place, I'll show you how real quick. So, you can either do this through Studio or uh, the game page. Okay, so, click these three dots, and you're gonna go to Configure Game. And this is gonna open up the, like, Configure uh, Experience page. So, go to Places, and then you can see right here. And this is the ring place, so we can just click Edit, and it should bring us to the ring place. Alright, we are in. Alright, so, I'm gonna quickly show how to do leader stats. Okay, so... Go in server script service and create a new script called just you can call it whatever. Uh, I'll call it later stats just because. Uh, and then you're gonna want to paste in a script that I'll have linked in the description. Uh, this was made by Zilks by the way, so credits goes to him. Okay, so this is the script right here. So I'll just explain it real quick. So this is literally the only thing you're gonna have to worry about. Uh, this badges table right here. This is. This is where you're gonna keep all of your badge values here. So these are the like dummy values. Um, I don't have. I, I didn't create like an actual badge for the game, but uh, you can search up how to create a badge for your experience because Roblox uh, tells you how to do that, not me. <laughs> so yeah, uh, basically once you just have your once you have your badge uh, values, you'll just paste them in here and always put a comma after your badge. So I'll just do that and uh, go like just do that every time you. Uh, paste in a badge value, put a comma after it. Okay, so that's later stats. Uh, I'm gonna quickly show you how to disable a thing that might bug you. So, if you know alignment keys, yeah, they're pretty useful for doing uh, stuff. 
and obby's like wall hopping and stuff but roblox recently implemented a new feature that obstructs it a little bit it just brings up this emote menu thing and once you press one of the keys and that's actually very simple to fix so instead of gui just make a new local script you can literally call it whatever i'll just call it emote menu disabler and uh, it's you're literally just going to need to type one uh, line of code Okay, so just type in game.sterogui set core GUI enabled, then type enum, not end, enum, dot core GUI type dot emotes menu, and then false. Now, uh, once you playtest, it should not appear. So let's do that. As you can see, no emote menu, and we can use our lemon keys freely. Now, just to prove that this works, I'm gonna uh, disable the script. So, enable tick off, and I'll play. And let's see, the emote menu should appear. If you have this bug, by the way, just click this arrow right here. It should fix it. As you can see, the emote menu appears when you can't use the alignment keys properly. So that, was, so that's the issue right here. This is why this script is here because it disables it. And uh, yeah, that's that's that fix. Now, I'm gonna cover how to fix player collisions and also how to fix server-sided client objects because those two are things that I forgot to cover in the previous episodes and both of them were actually very quick fixes so uh, I'll go over them really quick alright so you've probably added your own script to disable player collisions but that's not necessary because um, there's already a built-in way to do that so if you have a script in a workspace that like disables player collisions just delete it uh, I'll show you how to actually do it so go on server script service and then go to collision groups you see this, uh, there's a, like this disabled uh, part of the script. Yeah, you're going to want to enable this. This is the thing that this part of the script actually handles player collision. Like between other players. So you're going to want to turn this on. And there we go. Now player collision should be fixed. Okay, now that we've uh, fixed player collisions... I'll show you how to fix the server-sided client object issue, because that's a known issue with this kit, and there's actually a very simple solution. Okay, so, uh, you're gonna want to get the the JTO uh, tower kit. You can just drag it in temporarily. Uh, just find the local port script from it, then copy it. You can just Control z to get rid of the kit that you inserted. And then, just Control shift v in starter player scripts, and you can get rid of this the script repo part you need to get rid of the script repo part because there's already because that function is already in co loader and it's gonna mess with things if it runs twice now go inside the local part script and find where it says repo and uh, right here you see this line str equals script dot script repo yeah there we since we deleted the script repo folder it's not gonna find that so you just want to gray it out like so uh, so that script that part of the script is not necessary because it th literally that part of the code already exists in co loader So uh, yeah now that we've uh, done that it's time to test uh, if you don't have a buddy to test this with uh, You can just go to test and then local server switch it to two players and start It's gonna uh, open up three extra tabs one of them is gonna be for the server It's this one right here and the other two are gonna be for the players and there they are all right, so as you can see, player collision is off, as per usual. And uh, let's go over to the client objects to show that they work properly. And uh, yeah, okay, so this is gonna be like a camera, so you can see. Uh, if I push this, client sided as it should be, along with the platforms as well. You can see. And then if I do it on this window, the other window, you see client sided as it should be. If you want to close out of those tabs, go to the original tab and just do cleanup. Alright, so now that we fixed all of that, that pretty much uh, concludes this. Uh, you'll be on your own uh, for the uh, for the rest of your fan game creating journey. Uh, if you want extra resources, there will be ones in the J2 fan game creation community server. I'll have a link to that in the description. I'll have a paste bin link in the description also for all of the scripts I pasted in. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope these tutorials were helpful for you guys in creating your fan games. I wish you luck on your journey, everyone. I'll, I'll ha I have one thing to say. If you watch through all these videos, 
and decide you want to make a fan game but don't have any studio or scripting experience, please don't do it. Get a friend that actually knows what they're doing and have them do all the scripting stuff for you. If, you're, if you don't know what you're doing, you're not going to have a fun time making a fan game. Alright, so yeah, that concludes this series. I might post little additional videos as like to extra little things such as uh, boost barriers that uh, block multiple items at once. Um, or stuff like that, but I I'll most likely have all of those uh, posted as like extra resources on the JTO fan game creation community server. Uh, you might want to join that if you want extra resources or like extra things like for the kit. Speaking of the kit, there is actually a modified version of the kit made by Zilks that has extra features such as a menu with actual functioning uh, settings uh, such as key display limit and stuff like that. Uh, now I I personally don't use his kit, so any questions about uh, his kit? I can't answer. You're gonna have to ask him. Uh, and if you, and if you actually do have any questions about the kit, you can just create a uh, post on the help forums we have in the server. All right. So yeah, that concludes this video. Uh, I hope this. Uh, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the future. Goodbye.